Now let's talk about complex alpha creation. So I'm going to grab a cylinder, drag it on my canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, hit W and we'll scale this down a little bit. This is going to set that width, that target depth for our spotlight alphas. Let's hit the comma key, we'll go back into spotlight and we'll just grab this 512 hard surface. Hit Z and then you can just click anywhere in your screen and move these things around or if you want to organize them. I always like to click one of them and then do this tile selected. So now we do have this keyhole type shape here. So I go over here and I select this one. Let's say, okay, this, this keyhole shape is just about perfect. I just want to punch it right in the middle of the cylinder. So I'm going to snap it here and then snap that to the middle and I'm going to scale it out uh, how I want. Only problem is I really wish I had a circle cut out right in the middle of that. Now you could do a subtractive mesh and then a circle with an additive mesh, but you can also do complex alpha creation within the system. Now, if you want to keep this keyhole shape around, again, you can just duplicate this off and just go ahead and move this up and around out of the way. And then you have a duplicate sitting here. And now let's use this circle over here to cut a hole in there. Again, just because I want to leave this uh, circle alone, I can duplicate this thing off and then I can turn on quick select and then grab that circle. And then we'll go ahead and snap that to the center and then snap it to the middle of that alpha and then we can just scale this down. Now if you're having a hard time seeing that circle, like say, uh, you know, it looked like this and you couldn't really see it, this is where you can swap back to front of your alpha so you can see it a little bit better. In fact, this background opacity right here will uh, kind of determine how opaque that alpha ends up being. But now that we can see it, we can see we have another option right here next to the Snapshot 3D, and that's Union. Uh, if I just click this, it's going to union this together. So if I hold down Shift and just move this up and then click Union and then move this thing out of the way, you're going to see it's going to put both of those shapes together. However, if I undo that, just hit Control-Z and then hold down shift and just move that back down the middle. If I hold down alt and union, it's and then I move this circle out of the way, you're gonna see it's gonna cut through. So now I've altered the shape of this alpha. Now I can still go back to this original alpha here and uh, you know make sure it's selected. Let's go ahead and turn off quick select here. And we'll make sure this one's selected here. So at this point, if I want to extend, I can hold, uh, I can drop it down here and I can extend vertically and we can make that key shape a little bit longer. We can move it down a little bit. And now I can turn on Live Boolean and hold down Alt and do a snapshot and go ahead and cut that mesh uh, right through that uh, cylinder here. And if, again, if you look at the subtool here, you've got your cylinder and then you've got your new mesh here set to uh, subtractive. So let's play around with this shape a little bit more. Let's hit Z and we'll go ahead and rotate it this way. And we put the gizmo right here and we hold down Shift and flip vertically. You're gonna see it's gonna flip vertically at that image center. If you hold down Alt and flip vertically, it's gonna flip the other way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an extend to put that in the middle and then hold down shift and flip vertically. And now I've got an alpha that has this, uh, the exact same on both sides. And let's go ahead and extend this this way as well. Let's go ahead and grab the circle we were using earlier and we'll scale it down a little bit. And again, using union, we're gonna hold down alt and punch a hole through this alpha. Then we're gonna select this alpha here. And one more time, we're gonna hold down shift and flip vertically and then this time we're going to hold down Alt and flip horizontally, and now we've got this nice complex shape. So now if I just want to make this mesh, we can just hit Snapshot 3D, and now we have a version of this mesh that we can continue to refine however we'd like. So in this case, if we say wanted to do maybe a frame mesh and then make a snapshot, we could restore it back to its original shape here. And then this time we'll hold down Alt and shrink that shape down and then do another snapshot. And now you have a compound shape just using that one single alpha. Now there's another option available to you if you want to start with a completely fresh canvas. So let's go ahead and reset all of these here. And we'll go ahead and, um, I guess we don't want to get rid of them. We can go ahead and hide most of these here except for the uh, cylinder. And I'm just going to choose a random one of these here. And if we don't want to ruin the original, again, we can duplicate this off. We'll go ahead and scale this up. And if you already know, go ahead and scale this up. And if you already know the dimensions you want to work with, you can go ahead and do an extend horizontally or horizontally or vertically. It doesn't really matter because what we're going to do now is we're going to take this paint and we're just going to drag it until everything turns transparent. So now you have a big blank canvas on here. So if you want to take one of these and then say stamp it in the corner here. So we're just going to do a union on this one and then we'll reselect this one. And then we'll do, again hold down shift and flip vertically and then shift and flip horizontally. And then we'll go ahead and grab this box and we'll shoot that right in the middle and we'll go ahead and scale it up and we'll go ahead and do an extend and we'll do another union and one more we'll just grab this ZBrush alpha here and we'll go ahead and scale this up and again we can't see this one so I'm going to go and say send the front so now we can see it a little bit better we'll put this right here smack dab in the middle 
and then we'll hold down Alt and cut that through. So now we have this complex alpha. We can make a quick snapshot, and now we have that as geometry. Now that's not all you can do with paint. Uh, if you have paint selected, you can actually go through and you can brush uh, paint on there. You can hold down Alt and you can unpaint things. So if you want to just smooth this alpha over here so you can see it. And yeah, we'll go ahead and move this gizmo out of the way. So here you can see we can paint and then hold down Alt and unpaint. You can even switch out alphas on your brush. If you want to you know, paint with a star alpha, you can. And if you make your brush size really big, you can actually use this to just erase uh, what's on there. Let's go ahead and swap that star alpha back out. And if you hold down shift, you can snap it to a straight line. So you can use paint to actually go through and just paint any sort of alpha shapes that you want as well. Also remember, let's go ahead and turn on quick select and we're going to swap out this pixel logic one here. And we go ahead and scale this up here. In this case, instead of going in here and like painting out stuff that you don't want, what you can do is you can just create a snapshot. And then if you do uh, shift Z go into solo mode, you can go ahead and just select hold down uh, control shift and do select uh, rectangle uh, and you can go ahead and just get rid of stuff and then again you can just go to geometry modify topology and delete hidden or if you don't want to delete it you just want to split it into its own subtool you can go in here to split and you can do split hidden and now you have a subtool for the words and a subtool for everything else and one last thing that I think uh, we've already mentioned it but I just think it's important to iter uh, reiterate it if I go into the comma key here and we go into texture and we'll go ahead and just double click this image 4764 here. If we hit Shift Z, or I'm hit, sorry, hit the uh, comma key here, you're going to see it through it already automatically in a spotlight because it was active. So we can go ahead and move this. So with this here, we can use spotlight to create geometry from this. In fact, if we just hit Snapshot 3D, you're going to see this is what it creates because there's a lot of gray in this image. You can try going here to intensity and trying to do a levels, and that'll make uh, some parts of this. Let's go ahead and delete that geometry there. It'll make some parts of this transparent. So now when you do a snapshot with that one selected, that'll be the result you get. So you can just bring in RGB images and use them. You just might have to do a little bit of extra work uh, doing some cleanup. So if it's something easy, just doing a quick intensity uh, fix within ZBrush, just go ahead and bring it in. If not, it's probably better to author it externally and then bring it in. But let's go ahead and delete that one. And like I mentioned before, if you have all your spotlights set up and you have them organized how you like, always feel free to go up here to texture save your spotlight. It should open up the uh, location that's ideal for you to save those in, which is Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2019, ZBrush Z Spotlights, so that it'll save it in here, and your selected alpha will end up being your thumbnail here. So you can just save it in here, and you can hit the comma key to load it up whenever you need it next.